offshore wind farms. So offshore wind farms are huge turbines, and typically you need know, to inspect them to see blades are okay and so on. So two people had to be sent, one for security and the other one will climb on the blades to check if everything's okay. This takes about half a day per turbine and of course it's very expensive and it's a uh, risky business as well. So now people are using drones to capture video footage and then you bring those footages then you manually analyze them to see if the blades and the turbine is working. So when I spoke to them, my interest is, okay, why do I spend in front of the computer two hours checking if the blades are okay, could we not automate the process? We not automatically detect, right, this blade, there's something here. So wind turbines are just one area. Other areas you can think of so many, you know, uh, for example, here we have the problem of fishing, fishermen crossing borders here and there. So would it be possible to send a swarm of uh, drones, not one? So there are swarms, so they cooperate with each other, automatically fly. So they could check who's fishing where, and of course alert if somebody crosses the boundaries. I mean drones have their GPS, uh, whatnot, so you can do everything. You can control them remotely. That's one particular application. You can use a drone to see your, uh, in terms of agriculture, land clearance, how, you know, how many acres of uh, rice you have grown. You don't have to have very expensive satellite images to do this. A drone, a decent drone for a couple of thousand pounds can do it for you. But of course, interesting bit is to automatically analyze the video footage uh, and get the information to you. So that's the kind of work that I'm heading towards. And thank you very much for listening very patiently. I kind of, uh, on purpose, didn't want to give you too many technical details because I know the audience is quite varied and diverse. But I want to touch on a number of different applications. So there's something for everyone. But I'm, I'm very happy to answer take your questions or explain things in detail and you know, other modes of communication. So, yeah, I, I didn't put a lot of results and details about confidence levels and so on. Our aim is to aid the radiologists. I know, yes, even you know, radiologists. They have to train themselves every year. Still, sometimes they can't agree, so they have two people to others and so on and so on. But yes, there's always a case where this automated system can't do it 100 But even if a radiologist can't do it after all that training, then you can just stop. So what we aim to do is help the radiologist. If we have thousand mammograms to look at. If the system can okay, get through 200 of them with very high confidence and say this is abnormal or this is normal, then there's less for the radiologist to do and the radiologist can focus on the most important ones. So you know, always keep in mind that the automated systems are not there to replace the expert as such. Certainly, I don't think that they are yet at all. What we try to do is we classify and then give a confidence level saying, okay, I put this into a normal category and I'm 95% confident that my decision is correct. So I hope, we hope that will be a useful thing for the radiologists. Yes, in that case, what the, say, the mammograms that you would be studying would be definitely normal and the abnormal. Well, is it at the moment? At the moment, we have looked at normal versus the normal. In the next stage, is taking, take the, taking out the, uh, the benign I'm not sure. Yeah. So, so we can first we separate normal versus the normal and get rid of the normal ones. 
then we focus on the abnormal ones to say if these be high or malignant. Then to do that, we might have to look at certain specific features on the abnormal numbers. But that's kind of the second stage. So we go in stages. If that is and it's a similar situation when we're looking at uh, some some of my clinics are working on ovarian cancer. It's the same that they are trying. So we look at ultrasound images to see if it's a normal case or a normal. That's the first stage, and from there move on to the next stage. And what the radio of this are saying, the system is really helpful. Yes, it can't do everything for you, but it can do a lot of things that they would have had to do otherwise everything. Because they're coming in anyway, in grayscale. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, so it depends on the system. So the old ones we looked at, they are 8 bit. But I know that. I, I know that uh, there are much more digit, digital mammograms going up to 16 and so on. So they take very, very high resolution images. That's what they think. I mean, we're we hoping it helps. Because at high, uh, that at such a level, we get more information that we can't see. Some of the things we started looking at were very old X-ray images and then we scan digitized. But of course, now the digital government, which gives you very high resolution image and high big depth. So you think about that X-ray image Okay. So we haven't looked at calcifications looking at specific shapes at all. At the moment, we just look at the kind of the <coughs> region of interest, simply looking at texture. As well. But there are other techniques where you look at calcifications, counting them, what's the shape, the size, and so on. Nearest neighbor for classification because there are only two classes we're working on. Either normal or abnormal. So if you have a sample, either you're close to this one or to this one. But of course we found SPM tends to be better. Nearest neighbor is a very crude classification. What about the many experiments you have uh, insurance uh, related to classify the age? So you know, the application is yeah, yeah. to the insurance industry. Yeah. Wow. Well, I don't know about this. Um, so, so the insurance corporations, they, they would want to know a particular level? Yes, so it's something create something that's image can. Right. Oh, you mean to compensate the farmers? Yes. yes. Interesting application. Yeah. So are you working with it? Uh, yeah, it's some uh, satellite. Okay, fine. Obviously, with satellite imaging, you're looking at covering huge areas. But uh, with a drone, you might even look at small farms. Some mystery has come. Very interesting application. Then, when you talk about that, for all diseases, then you talk about the IRM. IRM is the important part of that. What would you like to see with the IRM? We haven't taken the images, so near infrared. So, we need to understand the kind of the compounds and material of the cocoa plant and the diseases. I am, it was just kind of a hint, hint that I had, hunch that I had. Say if you take the yeah, then you make it more uh some day that you go to be like some day that you go to be like exactly so kind of based on the hunger. I don't have expertise on the, uh, the 
job site. Um, but this is this is why she's working with her colleagues in the agriculture department. They have the expertise. But I thought visible alone might not get because of the various reactions I thought. It's near infrared because infrared alone can't get from your phone. So our normal phones filter out near infrared because we don't want it. So the idea is to remove those filters so your camera, phone camera can capture the both near infrared and visible. Oh, from an evaluation point of view, we didn't use magnet yeah. for, for the research purpose, so to test it. Where do you use this in the uh, location? You're talking about location? Location, yeah. So, I didn't talk about it here because I'm imagining. Uh, my community does a number of things using location. One is for crowd movement analysis. So you have a large group of people and you want to know how they behave, which direction they travel and so on. Another is indoor localization. So he is working on using Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and various other things to have an accurate location system for indoor situation. Uh, I couldn't really talk too much about it, but I'm happy to put which you do in contact. Right. Is that an uh, area you work? Uh, well, it's an area where it's being talked a lot today. Right. Uh, especially in areas uh, verticals, like retailing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe in the health industry, so on and so forth. Uh, so applications he's looking at, uh, of course, in, in big shopping centers, you want right. to give directions to the shoppers. In order to give them direction you need to where they are. Yeah. Another application area is in hospitals. So sometimes patients don't know where to go. Right. Other patients, you know, people suffering from dementia and so on, they forget. So to direct them to the appropriate place. But in order to give navigation instructions, you need to know where they are in an indoor environment. And sometimes even just locating beds in our hospital beds. Because people move them around and leave them at no beds. So you have to find where the beds are. So they haven't done age estimation. What they did was look at sun exposure. So they had skin samples. Uh, some were exposed to sun for a certain number of hours. Others were less exposed. They could kind of classify what was what. So the idea is typically as you age, your skin integrity goes down. So try to find the least. It is not necessary to estimate age. Uh, one of the things they are working on is cosmetics. So manufacturers of cosmetics want to show that if you put this cream, you will look younger. So how do you show that? So some sort of objective way to show. Then you can apply the cream on thousand people and automatically check after applying the cream, do our skin got better or whatever. So. No, because my research is completely different because I'm not working on any device Right. 
Uh, I know, for example, using face recognition, there are current commercial software which are quite good at saying how old you are by taking your face images. So they do, uh, I have a little bit of that in detail. In this particular case, they were simply looking at non-invasive techniques to see if there's anything wrong with your skin. Do you have a data set?